Scrabble for beginners. When I came round, I was woozy, still awash with the booze and drugs. My brother was there, I smiled up at him. I didn't know where I was. I felt drunk and kind of happy. Hi Rob, I said and held out my hand. He took it a little hesitantly and I shook it vigorously. And how are you? Well, I've been better. His eyes were moist, but he smiled too. How are you is more the question. Do you know why you're here? Why we're here? He looked around and I followed his eyes. There, there was mum and dad. Hello, I waved out them. This is, this is all very, um, can I have some water? One of the nurses fetched me some. I clumsily sat up, slurped it down and turned to my brother. What was going on? Is it, is it my birthday? Not quite. I fell back on the bed expansively. Rob continued. But you're here now. That's all that matters. You're here now and so are we. Splendid, I said and promptly fell asleep again. I woke up, the day continued, I slowly got my whereabouts, sobered up and realised I was in a sort of hell. It went in lurches, fits and stops, there was dead time followed by heightened fraught passages. I was seen by a doctor in a blank little room with my parents. She talked about the police, a crisis team and how we are going to move forward. No charges were being made, everyone was on my side. I was worried about one thing, the only thing. How would I sleep? Insomnia had haunted me. Over the last few months it had tortured me every night. It was an ongoing spectre. Well, we can't give you anything for tonight, the doctor said. It's felt that you need some time to let the drugs leave your body. This upset me. I pleaded with the doctor. Please. No, I'm sorry. Not this evening. More blank time. The journey home. My parents were taking me to their house to look after me. Dad had put the child locks on. I watched the trees, the streets rushing by. Hell was wider than the hospital ward. It was everywhere. Well, it's 10 a.m. and this day has just begun and I'm sitting in the kitchen playing Scrabble with my mum. It's not proper Scrabble, it's beginner's Scrabble for kids and it's a board from the 80s and the pieces are quite big and the squares have got pictures in like an Indian in profile or a bird on a branch or a cat with a smile but we're not playing competitively because I can barely count anymore 
and it's all I can do just to get the pieces on the board. And my mum spells I's E Y E S. And I spell Dim D I M. And I've got Dim Eyes, I've got Dim Eyes. Dim Eyes. And I'm looking at the board. I can read the signs. And these are the things that I think as I sit in this chair. Just thinking about the words on the board and my thousand yard stare. After an eternity, it's my go again. And I spell spoon, S-P, O-O-N. And the spoons are all in the drawer where they belong. Not with the knives though, the knives are all gone. And they disappeared quite suddenly one night. And I know it's a cliche, but I couldn't even get that right. And my mum spells Lake L A K E. And there's one down the road which is calling to me. But I won't be able to do it because my parents never leave me alone. And I'd have to find some pills and the water would be so cold. And these are the things, these are the things, these are the things that I think as I play Scrabble with my mum and wait for the weakest link. phone rings and it's T-Mobile and he says can you talk is this a good time I could call back later when it'd be best 
And I say, no time soon, because I'm clinically depressed. And my mum's laughing and clutching her sides. And before too long, so am I. And as she fans her face, she hits the board and the pieces hit the floor. For a moment, we're miles away. And this is the highlight to my day. Thank you. So, the middle section of the book deals with the inspiration for the songs, but it also deals with writing the songs and with Ruth, who told me the piano, really helping me. So I played, every time I wrote a new song, I would play them to her first. So imagine, I've just finished that song, and uh, yeah, well, I'm playing the end of it. My playing wasn't good. I was jerky and hesitant. It was one of the first songs I'd written, and I didn't play it well. But the words were there, the words. I was concentrating hard, glaring at the keys and my clumsy hands. I plinked and plonked my way up and down the chords, the song came to a faltering, awkward end, and I looked up. Ruth was crying. Ruth was really crying. Her shoulders shook, and she pulled her sleeve up to her eyes to catch the tears. Ruth was in her early 20s and quite a bit younger than me. We said that we were friends because she had an old soul and I was pretty immature. There were times when it definitely felt like she was the eldest, but when she cried that day, she looked like a teenager. She looked like a girl. So, I said in a jolly tone, raising my eyebrows. Yeah. You like it? She smiled, snorted and nodded her head. She began to laugh. I got up from my seat. I moved to her. Not sure what to do. I paused, but my body soon took over. My hands sought her out. She hooked her arms under mine, ran them up my back and pulled me in for a close, tight hug. We stood like that for a time in a strong embrace together. After a while, she pulled away and looked up. Her face was, al her face was alive and her eyes shone. In that moment, she was vital and sad and beautiful. I, thum I thumbed the tears away and she held my face in her cupped hands. You bastard, she said, and I started to laugh. That was, that was elegant and heartbreaking, she paused. And horrendous. You could have warned me. I was moved. I hoped she'd like I'd hoped she'd like it. 
but I wasn't ready for her reaction. Her tears pulled at my centre and turned my stomach over. We stood holding each other for a while until eventually she broke away and moved to the piano. She composed herself, wiped her cheeks and picked out a few of the notes. Nice chords, chords, she said, but this makes it. This B just here, coming in like it does, like a stumble, like an afterthought. She played the refrain and looked at me with those big brown eyes. I was thinking, I said, I think this has been good for me, in a weird way. I think I'm gonna write more about it all, about everything. Oh my God, she smiled. More? You're gonna do more? I don't think I can cope in it with any more.